Robert Town and I were roommates at some point, and he had this idea that we talked about, I don't know how long before he actually started writing it, to do a trilogy on um, Los Angeles. And the idea was to do a film, a trilogy, and wait the same number of years between them that passed in real time, that started in 1937, and end with the third film in 1953, the year that No Fault Divorce went into uh, effect in California. There were a number of steps about, uh, uh, that brought me to, to Chinatown. One um, was, uh, oddly enough, was a, a, a construction project that was going on up at my uh, then house uh, in Benedict Canyon. A developer had managed to fog through City Hall an outrageous project which was going to be moving nine or ten million yards of earth around and destroying the entire canyon. And I went down to City Hall and I saw how they worked and, and the, the, the building superintendent actually said, this project is so ill-advised that I'm going to approve it because it will never get through. I mean, you know, the most tortured logic imaginable. And then I was walking with an old friend of mine along the beach, uh, the palisades above the beach, and I suddenly felt like I was about eight or nine years old because all the smells that I remembered as a kid, eucalyptus and pepper and the ocean. And then I realized that uh, because of the growth of the city, all those scents that you could catch anywhere in the city had sort of been banished uh, to the farthest edges where you could, you know, only a few traces left of them. And then there was a, a, an article called Raymond Chandler's L.A. And in it, there were photographs of Los Angeles taken at that time, which was 1970, but uh, meant to suggest the period of Raymond Chandler, late 20s into the 30s. And I thought, my God, it would still be possible to recreate the Los Angeles of that period. And all these other things were rolling up at me. Then I went to uh, Eugene, Oregon with Jack, and uh, he was uh, directing Drive, he said, and he wanted me for some perverse reason to be in the film playing uh, a teacher, so I, I did. And I checked out of the library up there a book called Southern California Country, an Island on the Land, and in it there was a chapter called Water, 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 and it was a real eye-opener. It was about the way that the city of Los Angeles basically stole the water of the Owens Valley uh, and brought it to the San Fernando Valley and then incorporated the valley into the city. So I took that kind of nostalgia that I felt. It was more than nostalgia, the pain of feeling a loss of those things that I loved so much in childhood. And then the reason for that loss, which was the cancerous growth of this place at the expense of beautiful surrounding areas and put them together and that was the beginning of Chinatown. Then there was one final component to the, uh, the initial phase of it and that was Hira, my dog. I had bought Hira from a Hungarian vice cop who was breeding these dogs and um, we got to talking. I said, well, what do you do, Tony? And he said, well, you know, I work in Chinatown. I said, doing what? He said, nothing. So said, wait a minute. You're working vice in Chinatown and you're doing nothing? He said, oh, yeah. I said, well, why is that? He said, that's what they tell us to do, is nothing. I said, why? He said, well, <laughs> because the problem is that we can't get inside that uh, culture. Uh, the dialects and the tongs uh, are just, we're just shut out. And so we really can't tell if something is going on, whether we're, helping somebody commit a crime uh, or, or preventing it. And that really stuck in my mind. I thought, what a great notion. And so I gave Giddis a background in Chinatown where he did something and it didn't work out. Because then Chinatown as a, as a notion becomes, begins to stand for the futility of good intentions. And then I thought, wouldn't it be great to do a detective movie, not about uh, those things that had 
traditionally been done in films, but do it about something that's in front of your face every day, like water and power. And to make that a mystery, you know, make a mystery out of the fact that uh, the reservoirs are being emptied. I thought it's something you can follow through the city, just like you can follow this dried L.A. riverbed, and a man drowns in a riverbed. Uh, that's dry. How the hell did that happen? And I thought, wouldn't it be great to do a detective movie out of that? And so all these pieces came together, and I caught up with Jack and said, listen, I've got an idea. What if I do a detective movie? It was a series of conversations, I must say. I don't remember them specifically, but he had this idea. All I pretty much said was fine. And Robert liked writing for me as he understood me as an actor in, in that period and thought this would be good. I couldn't have uh, conceived uh, or written the character of Giddis without my knowledge of, uh, of Jack and my friendship with him. We'd roomed together. We'd been in acting class together. Uh, I had seen him struggle in anonymity for 15 years, being insulted at the unemployment office uh, by people telling him that maybe he should get a, a real job. Uh, all of those things that, uh, in one way and another, uh, became part of the character of Giddes, the thin-skinned quality, uh, the uh, cynicism, the uh, flashes of anger, um, all of the things that made Jack unique as an actor and, a, and as a person were characteristics that uh, inevitably found their way into the character of Giddes. You must really think I'm stupid, don't you, Giddes? I don't think about it that much, but uh, give me a day or two and I'll get back to you. I got involved with Chinatown on a rainy night back in 71. I was having dinner with uh, Bob Town, who was a at that moment, a fledgling writer with a good reputation, but uh, money meant nothing to him. He just wanted to write what he wanted to write, and I wanted him to write Gatsby for me. I offered him at that time, which was an astronomical amount, $175,000 to do it. I said, no, I don't want to try and beat Fitzgerald. I didn't want to be uh, the unknown Hollywood screenwriter who fucked up uh, a, a, a literary classic, because I figured that's what would happen, you know. I mean, you can afford to do that if you have some sort of reputation. Uh, but if you have less than none and you do that, you know, I mean, and, and I just didn't want to do it. I didn't think it was going to make a good movie. And I wanted to do uh, uh, what, I, what I was doing. I says, I'm writing a story called Chinatown. But it's not about Chinatown. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a place in your mind, rather. He began telling me about it. He says, let's do that instead. Robert Evers was not an independent producer. He was the head of the studio. He was the head of production and head of seduction. You know, Bob was good-looking, had a beautiful house. He was the talk of the town in, in those days. Robert Evans is a unique individual in every way, so... Uh, and somebody that we all got along with and somebody who understood all, you know, we were friends. I mean, Robert Town had his wedding at, at Evans' house. Chinatown was my first film as a bonus because no person ever ran a studio and could make their own films. So instead of giving me a raise, Charlie Bluton, who was at that time owned Paramount, he let me have something unprecedented which is being able to make a film a year and also run the studio. And it worked against me, not for me. If the picture were not a success, it wouldn't have mattered, but the picture being the hit that it was, all the other filmmakers around, apparently said, it's not right, he's working on Chinatown, why is he spending time with us in our film? So it, it, it reverberated negatively towards me. I was living in Rome and working there, and I loved it there. And uh, Jack called and said, I don't remember how specific he was about the kind of film, but that that's something for us to do together. We spent a lot of time together, Roman and I. You know, he's one of the great directors. So just based on that, not only the friendship, anybody would really have a strong desire to work with him. And Chinatown is a Romana Clef thriller. 
Uh, Roman's very good and had an already well-established reputation for suspense pictures, even comedy, my favorite cul-de-sac. So it was just a kind of natural progression. I wanted a European's vision, not an American vision of it, because the Europeans see America differently. Then Jack wanted him very much, and I wanted him very much, and he wasn't that anxious at the moment to come back to America. The subject was uh, exciting. The genre was something that I thought uh, of doing one day. But I wasn't very hot on going back to, to, to Hollywood and making a movie there again. But Bob Evans said, come over, we talk about it. Uh, I, had, I had criticism regarding the script. So I took a trip and we had a meeting to talk about the script. And I remember Bob Town at the time was somehow um, depressed by all criticism that we had, which mainly was the question of the length. It was about 180 pages. And so I said, Roman, you know, let me take one more whack at it. I said, OK, and uh, see you then. <laughs> and I left. And I thought that it was probably the end of my involvement. I did a second draft, and I, I don't know. I, I think that Roman probably liked the first draft better than the second. And then I, I somehow got more involved in it, and uh, Bob uh, Evans said, well, you must, guys, sit down now and really uh, put it into the uh, shootable shape. Before we started work, he said, I have a present for you. And he gave me a book. It was How to Write a Screenplay. And he signed it to my dear partner with hope, Roman.